All right, this is the eighth grade TCAP practice test uh, for math. This is question number 64. Uh, question number 64 says this is a graph of a linear function, or the graph of a linear function is shown below. Which linear equation is the best, uh, is best represented by this graph? In order to be able to do this, you have to know a little bit about how graphs are set up. When you have y by itself, which all the answer choices do, you're in what's called slope-intercept form. Now, mathematicians are not exactly the most clever people to name things. They pretty much name things based on utility. This is what slope-intercept form looks like in its boring state. It's named slope-intercept because the thing in front of the x is the slope, and the thing after the x is the intercept. So what I'm going to do is look at each one of them and see where uh, or what values they suggest that I have and see if it makes any sense. First off, you can see that the line goes up from left to right. So if I start down here, I have to go up to get here, which means that I am increasing, which means my slope should be positive. So if I circle the thing with x, any of them that are negative can't be the answer because a negative slope goes down from over time. It's almost like it's going up or down over time as I go left to right. So as you can see, h and j both have negative slopes. So they cannot be the answer because this is a positive line or a line with positive slope. So it has to be either f or g. From there, all we need to do is think about the y-intercept or the intercept itself. The y-intercept or the intercept that they're given in this equation is the exact point that it hits the y-axis. And the y-axis, of course, is the one that goes straight up and down. It's even marked as y. So what happens if I just took my hand and covered up uh, this 2x? And then I covered up this 3x. All I would be left with is y is equal to negative 3 for f. And for g, y is equal to negative 2. So I'm just going to look on the graph right on the y-axis here and see that it crosses right at negative 3. So the only answer choice left that has all the components would be f. Not a big deal, right? You can do most of this problem without having to do the slope at all other than to know that it's positive or negative. But let's look at that answer choice just a little bit more for just a second. I'm not going to spend forever on it. And we're going to talk about how to break it down if you'd like to do it uh, from all the components. So I have y is equal to 2x minus 3. Anytime I have this, I'm going to circle that thing with x. And then I'm going to make a fraction out of the slope. Anything inside that circle is the slope. That's the change that goes on in the graph. So 2x is really 2 over 1. By the way, a million x would be a million over 1. What the top number tells me in my slope fraction is whether to go up or down and how many. And the bottom number tells me to go to the right. The thing outside the circle, the, the y-intercept, is the place where it crosses the y-axis. So we see that the thing outside that uh, circle is negative 3, so right here. And then it tells me to go up 2, because it's positive 2, if it was negative, it would go down, and then to the right, 1, from that point. So I'm going to go up 2, 1, 2, and then I'm going to go over 1. Well, that's on the graph. And if I go up 2 more and to the right 1, that's on the graph. Up 2 more and right 1, well, that's on the graph. Well, there it is. If I connect the dots, I make the nice, and sorry about the not exactly being on the line thing. There we go. It makes a nice version of the graph. So all the components are there, so the answer is, of course, F.